The first three days after concrete is placed are the most critical to concrete quality, since concrete is most vulnerable to damage during this time. Concrete reaches about 70% of its strength after being in place for seven days. At 14 days, concrete achieves approximately 85% of its strength. Under normal conditions, maximum strength is reached at 28 days. Special consideration to unusual weather, size of structural members, and mixture proportions may require longer curing period. There are two kinds of pressure exerted on a foundation wall, vertical and lateral. Vertical pressure is exerted on a foundation by live and dead loads, including the weight of the structure, furniture, and appliances. Lateral pressure is exerted on a foundation by the soil. A wall made of concrete has a great deal of compressive strength, which is its ability to hold up under vertical pressure. However, concrete has far less resistance to lateral forces, which push against the wall sides. That's why rebar is used to improve the performance of this material's resistance to different kinds of forces. Rebar is a deformed steel bar with ridges on the surface to allow the bars to interlock with concrete. Solid fiberglass reinforcement bar may be used instead of steel rebar. Fiberglass reinforcing bar has the same tensile strength as steel rebar, but it will not rust. Rebar is identified by numbers from number 3 through number 18. The bar diameter is determined by multiplying the number designation by one eighth of an inch. For example, a number 4 rebar is 4 eighths of an inch, or one half. Rebar size placement and spacing are shown on the foundation plan. Masonry walls may be reinforced with rebar. Vertical rebar is placed in the cores of concrete masonry units, CMUs, and the cores are filled with concrete. Welded wire reinforcement or welded wire fabric is heavy gauge wire joined in a grid and commonly used to reinforce concrete slab at great floors, sidewalks, and driveways. To create the shape of the foundation, forms must be built. When two inch thick planks are used as sheathing, whalers are not required and studs and stakes may be placed farther apart. If panel forms are used, snap ties are laid out horizontally at two feet on center. One, fasten bottom plate to concrete footing. Two, toenail studs to bottom plate. Tie studs together with temporary brace. 3. Apply sheathing to inner face studs. 4. Drill snap tie holes. 5. Insert snap ties through holes and between whalers. 6. Place whalers. Insulating concrete forms are a type of concrete forming system that consists of a layer of concrete sandwiched between expanded polystyrene foam forms on each side. The forms remain in place after the concrete has been placed and become a permanent part of the walls or floors. Insulating forms combined with the concrete provide a continuous insulation system and an excellent sound barrier. Water conditions on and below the ground surface must be considered in foundation construction. Precautions must be taken to ensure that water does not enter the living area of a full basement foundation. Footing drains, commonly referred to as drain tile, are perforated pipes laid along outside of foundation footings to collect rainwater and water from melting snow percolating down through the backfill and move it away from the foundation. When installing drain tile, a layer of gravel, commonly between 3 to 5 inches, is placed at the bottom of the footing trench. The drain tile is placed on the top of the gravel base. For the best results, the bottom of the drain tile should be flush with the bottom of the footing. Drain tile is covered with a 4-inch layer of gravel. 
A sump well may be required for full basement foundations when soil conditions do not provide adequate drainage of surface water away from a building. I hope that it will help you to do a better job.